When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste. Or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products. Because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Bakers, fresh for everyone. WeHearYouRareDisease.com is a storytelling project that raises awareness of those affected by rare autoimmune conditions. If you live with either multifocal motor neuropathy, MMN, or myositis, or have a family member or friend who does, share your story today to help uplift the community's collective voice at WeHearYouRareDisease.com. State Farm and DJ Dramos from Life as a Gringo know that getting your money right brings freedom, empowerment, and future success. It's like we have to unlearn, as we do in every other part of our lives, but financially unlearn a lot of the BS that we were taught that holds us back from getting the sort of lifestyle that we want and being able to live the comfortable, financially free lifestyle that I'm sure all of us are striving for. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. If you want to go, journey if you're skeptical don't worry not here to preach gonna keep it clean and talk miracles where faith meets laws of nature get in touch with your creator with a bacon loving jew she even speaks hebrew what's that got to do It's Leanne here on What's God Got to Do With It, and I'm really excited to share this series called Acting As If, which in a way is the origin story of the God Pod. So I had the incredible opportunity to join forces with the amazing Amy Brown for a series called Acting As If, which literally came to be on a walk on a trail here in Nashville when Amy was like, okay, Leanne, what is the deal with this idea of acting as if? And I kind of believe in it, But it's definitely not as easy as it seems. You know, can you break it down for me? And I was like, oh, girl, you have no idea. I love this stuff because unbeknownst to her, I'd been teaching my own version of belief shifting to my clients who, just like her, trying to act as if or use fake positivity and feel good affirmations and fake it till you make it mantras, it just did not work, not in the long run, at least. And that is where this four part series was born. Inside Acting As If, Amy and I explored the science behind shifting beliefs, and we dove deep into strategies to break free from negativity, even if positive thinking and acting as if has never worked for you in the past. And we laid it out step by step, teaching you how to nurture a brain that's not just emotionally healthy, but also how to become emotionally available to yourself, which we talk about all the time here on The God Pod. In other words, it's a journey into understanding the power of our thoughts and how to leverage them to influence our beliefs, our feelings, and our behaviors. It's the crash course in transformation that I wish somebody had taught me decades ago. Little did we know then that this series would be the unexpected catalyst for what is now the What's God Got to Do With It podcast, which I can only describe as a God thing because Amy and I had no idea when she first brought up the idea for this series. So while What's God Got to Do With It explores the intersection of faith and science, acting as if focuses more on the science of belief. So without further ado, let's dive into the four-part series, Acting As If. Okay, we're here. We finally made it to the final part, which is the doing. So for whatever reason, if you're just now pulling this part of acting as if up, stop what you're doing. Go back to part one, because part one, two, and three are very important to understand part four. So part one was thinking. Part two is feeling. Part three is believing. And now here we are with part four, which is the doing. Yeah. And we're going to really put a wrapper and a bow around everything because as you're now seeing this buildup from the thinking side of it, our thoughts are creating feelings that then cause the action. And that's really what we're talking about. So you can see how if we had just fast forward or skipped to the action without addressing 
the thoughts, the feelings, the beliefs that were either keeping us or supporting us to get there, it's kind of like the action part is a moot point. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if we haven't addressed all that other stuff. And the doing side of it is usually what people want to rush to or skip to. And it's like, just give me something to do. Give me an action item. Give me a checklist. And we're going to talk about distinctions that are going to make sure that those are winning action items for you and really strategic and serving you and creating less resistance or eliminating resistance. But I really want to reiterate that the meat of everything has been in one, two, and three. And those are the parts that, again, might not be so sexy to some people. It's like, just, again, give me an action item. But it was so necessary. And this is just going to be really the cherry on top. It makes me think of times where I thought, I don't need the instructions, whether I'm cooking or putting something together. I don't need the directions. I got this figured out. This is easy. And then something goes wrong. Right. And it's like, shoot, yeah. there was just these one, two or three simple steps that I missed that derailed the entire thing. And so look at it that way. Like this is a, you're cooking dinner. It's a recipe. You're having people over. You want the food to taste really, really good. You don't want to just throw it all together. And for you, like you're doing this for yourself. Like this is something that is going to serve you long-term and me long-term and Leanne Long term. That's why acting as if is so cool, but you can't forget steps one, two, and three. Absolutely. And you don't want to put like marinara sauce in your chocolate chip cookie recipe. No. You know, so it, it really that, is. That's a well, good metaphor. That, I love hey, salty sweet. I don't know. I don't know. I do put some um, pretzel pieces in there. Put sausage gravy on top of cinnamon rolls. Ooh, okay. I would, I try anything once. Oh, that is legit. Yeah. You need to do that. Okay. So. Welcome to Tennessee. <laughs> well, that was a Texas, that awesome Alabama thing. thing. Okay. Mm -hmm, my dad and Family, we've been doing, we do it every Christmas. It's a tradition every morning, cinnamon rolls, sausage gravy, and it is so good. I highly recommend if you do it, get the Jimmy Dean spicy sausage. It's really not that spicy, but it just gives it a little bit of an extra kick with, obviously it's white gravy because it's like, like you were going to do a biscuits and gravy, but instead yeah. cinnamon roll and it's the perfect combo. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm down. The, the doing, I, I know we're going to get into like the winning game versus the losing game. Right. So yeah, these are the really the distinctions that I want you to keep in mind that will, again, create so much more flow, ease, get rid of that resistance. So the first thing I want to talk about is this idea of, are you playing a winning game or are you playing a losing game? So now, of course, we're talking about the actions side of that cascade. We have the thoughts, the feelings, and now that lead to the actions. So of course, we've aligned our thoughts. We've eradicated any of the beliefs. We've pulled those weeds from the garden, mixing metaphors here. And now the action side of it. So now that we're getting to the action side of it, and we we talked about in the other episodes about this cascade, and I just kind of generally mentioned acting in a way that serves us or moving in the direction that we want to be going in. And so now I'm going to go narrow and deep into that kind of thing. So the first thing, the big distinction that I just want you to be aware of, and again, these awarenesses are going to give you insight to be able to make better decisions. And ironically, we're giving you a way to shift your thinking about actions so that by consequence, the actions end up shifting. So the first one is this idea of, are you playing a winning game or are you playing a losing game? So the winning game is, are you setting yourself up for success? Are you setting yourself up for a long-term transformation versus short-term change that you're gonna have to give back? Are you setting yourself up for a game that you actually want to win, that you want to be playing? Or are you playing a losing game, a game or an action plan that you hate along the way? Again, we talked about neuro associations, right? You don't like, you're having to force, convince, persuade yourself to do. You actually don't even want to end up there. So I know for me, and I'll use a body example, but this can go for anything. When I was first transforming my body and before I realized I had so many disordered patterns, I was so focused on the outcome of like how I wanted to look or what I, the shape or size I wanted my body to be without even thinking about like, wait a minute, who I have to be and what I have to do and how I have to feel to get and keep that body. Oh my gosh, I don't even want that, right? And so one of those things is again, aligning the game plan and the strategy and the actions with who we wanna be and how we wanna feel that's supported by those thoughts and those beliefs that we've talked about in the other episodes of Acting As If. So again, noticing like, are you playing a winning game where it's a game that sets you up for ease and success and flow and you end up actually going to where you want to get to versus are you playing this losing game and you're having to force, persuade, convince yourself. You don't even want to get there. It's a game that maybe or you sabotage can't. probably yeah. that just popped into my head. Absolutely. Of, like sometimes 
I am aware I'm playing a losing game and yet I just, it, it's sort of comfortable at times. Yeah. So I'm like, well, it totally. would be exhausting to try to turn this around and go the other direction, even though it makes me think of the, be a buffalo, like go into the storm. So when there's a storm, cows turn away from the storm okay, because they think, okay, if I turn this way and go away from it, I'll be good. But buffaloes are like, eh, the storm's going to catch up with me anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and go straight through this and I'm going to get out the other side faster. Get it's it going to suck for a minute, but I'm going to get it over with. Whereas the storm eventually catches up to the cows and they're going the same direction as the storm. So they end up in the storm longer. And the time before the storm, they're in fear and worry and dread and all the things. So right. And the buffaloes, yeah. they're just owning it. Like we're yeah. going to we're going through the storm. This is what it is. Let's go, boys and girls. Such a great point. Yeah, I think of sometimes I choose the losing game because it seems easier. And then the sabotage part is sometimes I literally know I'm sabotaging myself and I still do it. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy. Yeah, there's a But quote. it's not. It's cause not because you're. Not, just, it's just human. Not, yeah, I'm not crazy. Yeah, the beautiful kind of crazy. The the you know the kind of crazy that we all have that makes us human. One of my favorite quotes is, "Life is easy if you live it the hard way, and hard if you live it the easy way." And it's just another way of saying, like, yeah, the short term gratification trap it feels easy right now, but it's harder in the long run. And the longer, harder path of doing the work, it feels harder in the short run, but it's easier in the long run. And another point that kind of came to my mind as you were talking is this idea, like, are you, again, playing a game that's setting you up to win? So maybe you're not responsible for this air quotes game that you're in. And again, the game is the metaphor. But like, are you playing somebody else's game and you're set, set up to lose? So that's another form of a losing game versus a winning game. And that's where, again, it takes some awareness to be like, listen, this is not the game I want to play. Maybe it's not the game I thought I signed up for. And giving yourself permission, because again, we saw the cascade of who you're being when you're feeling like crap or feeling resentful, or it's going to create actions. Again, that's where the coping mechanisms come in. And we're all of a sudden numbing out on Netflix and Cheez-Its, and we don't even know why. I do love Cheez-Its, though. So. Yeah, Ain't I got wrong with Jesus. Yeah. yeah, that's in my genetics though. My yeah. grandmother was a bottled Coke woman. Okay, yeah. Old school classic totally. glass bottle of Coke with Cheez Its. And she would take her dentures out and just live her best life. I love it. That's a winning game right there. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so when my sister and I are together, sometimes to honor my grandma, we do Coke like that with Cheez Its. And then to honor our dad, we do a Coke bottle like that, or it could be a plastic one if you want, or a can, who cares? And you pour peanuts inside. And that's what my dad would do on road trips. Yeah, peanuts and Coke, I've heard that. pour it in there. And then that way, when you take a sip, you get a little snack at the same time. I think the theme of We're this talking, episode is sweet and salty. Yeah, <laughs> food combos. <laughs> yeah, yes, I love it, it is. Okay, uh, okay keep but, going. Yeah, so that's, that's the first distinction is this, are you playing a winning game versus are you playing a losing game? And really the key is just to stop playing the losing game to start, even if you don't know what a winning game looks like just yet. Are you tired of your scented cleaning products smelling and cleaning like meh? Then it's time for an upgrade with the power of Clorox Sentiva. With an uplifting scent that smells like coconut, Clorox Sentiva gives you powerful clean like Clorox, but a feeling like <sighs> being transported to a tropical island retreat. Imagine putting your phone on Do Not Disturb, tuning out all the constant, just the feeling of warm sand in between your toes and a fruity drink in your hand. The ones with the little umbrella. Refresh your home to feel like an all-inclusive vacation by getting Clorox Sentiva. Also available in grapefruit and lavender scents at a nearby retail store. You're probably careful with your personal information. But what about the other places that have it? Like the doctor's office that mixed up your files. They have your social security number. The power company that mistakenly cut your service has your payment info and last three addresses. And the hotel that lost your reservation has your passport info. Your information is in endless places out of your control. Any one of them could accidentally expose you to hackers and identity theft through lax security, breaches, or simple mistakes. But LifeLock monitors millions of data points every second and alerts you to a wide range of threats. If your identity is stolen, a U.S.-based restoration specialist will fix it, guaranteed, or your money back. With plans covering up to $3 million for stolen funds and expenses. Mistakes happen. Don't let not having protection be one of them. 
Save up to 40% your first year at lifelock.com slash iHeart. That's lifelock.com slash iHeart to save up to 40%. Terms apply. Good sleep should come naturally. And with the new Natural Hybrid mattress, it can. A collaboration between award-winning mattress brand Lisa and home design favorite West Elm, the Natural Hybrid is the culmination of these two companies' shared values. Premium materials, meticulous craftsmanship, and sustainable practices. Made with natural latex, responsibly sourced natural wool, and environmentally safe foams, the Natural Hybrid elevates your sleep sanctuary. Indulge your senses and supports a greener tomorrow. Plus, when you purchase the natural hybrid, you're also helping fuel Lisa's work with shelters and those in need. Since 2015, Lisa has donated more than 40,000 mattresses to ensure children and families have a safe place to sleep. Don't put off a good night's sleep any longer. Get a Lisa mattress today for a sound sleep tonight. Visit lisa.com slash iHeart. That's l-e-e-s-a dot com slash iHeart. The second distinction is this concept of making goals or creating promises or agreements with yourself or commitments in minimums, not in maximums. So let me just explain what I mean. And this is also a part of, you know how I talked about creating positive neuro associations and that's kind of what puts the neuro magic on habits and makes beliefs happen faster and download faster. Making goals or creating habits in minimums versus maximums is also another part of the neuro magic recipe. And so a lot of us are inclined for that zero to 60 mentality or the harder, faster, more mentality. And it's actually, again, kind of a surefire way to sabotage us and ensure that we won't do it very long. So let's just use like a movement example. So if somebody is is sedentary right now and they're not moving and they're kind of on the couch seven days a week and they think, okay, if I'm going to be a fit, healthy person, I should probably commit to, you know, walking for 30 minutes, power walking 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Okay. So to somebody that might be a minimum if they're already power walking. But to somebody who's completely sedentary and not moving at all, that is a maximum. That is a zero to 60. And it's it's working to failure, not working to success. Like I have to get to 30 minutes of power walking. But again, because of whatever neuro associations are also already laid down, it's probably, you're probably gonna have to force, convince, persuade, coerce yourself to get to that 30 minutes a day. And there's more success, obviously. That's why it's more successful when you give yourself a realistic goal of like, oh, I just need to have some movement today and let's see how far I go. And then tomorrow, let's see how far I go. Yeah, for sure. And you want to get specific. So the, the oh, we gotta alternative be of that- I was just saying, let's, yeah, let's just see what happens. Be health, air quotes healthy and eat air quotes better. Yeah, but so that's vague. So with the, the so that would be an example of a maximum, that 30 minutes versus, okay, meeting yourself where you are and saying, okay, I'm going to just do five minutes minimum. And if I want to do more, I can do more. I'm going to do five minutes minimum five days a week instead of 30 minutes maximum five days a week. But then if I want to do more than five minutes, it's because I'm choosing it, not because I'm forcing it. And heck, you might end up getting to 30 minutes, but now you're going to success and the rest is choice versus getting to failure and like creating negative neuro associations along the way. I don't want to derail anything here, but I did see this one guy talking about how every time he's at the gym, he does one more rep, not 10 more. And he, I mean, he's a guy that works out and does reps, but it doesn't matter. However many he set out to do, if he was like, okay, I'm going to do 20 of these, he always does 21. And then, you know, over on the leg machine, he might be like, okay, my goal was to do 10 of these. He does 11. And he said, it's, it, it just prepares his brain to always be ready to do more and know that you're capable. I don't know. Yeah. That was a brain thing. It's a so. plus one for sure. A you plus know, one. Yes. Yeah. And the same thing can be true in terms of like your vision for yourself and your goal for yourself. So let's say like on a scale of one to 10, you feel like you're a two on the motivation scale for working out, right? Well, most people, their brain jumps to like, well, how do I get from a two to a 10? But what in reality your brain really needs is you need to start thinking about it. Well, how can I get from a two to a three? And then from a three to a four? 
and then a four to a five. And again, like you're plus one-ing rather than plus fiving or tening. And that's an example of setting goals and minimums, not maximums. And again, it creates a completely different thought process and different answer versus that zero to 60 unsustainable because we all know that when we go harder, faster, more zero to 60, we end up right back where we are, where we were in the beginning. So that is the concept of, you know, how to really set yourself up again for a winning game that you can play and want to play and you'll witness yourself being successful. The cherry on top of that is when you witness yourself following through on these plus ones versus these plus tens, you're going to learn to trust yourself more. You're going to learn to believe the promises that you make and you're setting yourself up for success. And then that brings us to the third and final part of this so that you can now really act as if is I call it reverse engineering. So a lot of people think about, okay, what do I need to do? And what I invite you to do is now that we've talked about feeling and you're actually in touch with it is how do I want to feel and who do I want to be? And then based on that, reverse engineer your actions to fill in that gap. Okay. So it's a completely different thought process. So we're kind of like flipping the script because the truth is, is that a lot of things that we're doing, we've done it before and we know how the story ends. And it's like, if I told myself, okay, just go work out, just go to the gym and get off, get off the couch and go to the gym. And I'm not actually doing it right. I I know how the story ends. It's not going to actually like motivate me, move me, anything like that. Cause again, it's a doing, there's no feeling associated with it. Maybe there's even negative associations associated with it versus if I say, okay, how do I want to feel? Well, I want to feel like I was productive, but I don't want to feel like super exerted. Or I want to feel like I move my body, but I don't want to be super sweaty, right? And well, how can I reverse engineer that? Well, maybe I'll just go walk around the block or maybe I'll just stretch in my living room versus before if we hadn't reverse engineered how we wanted to feel or who we wanted to be, we we might've thought like, oh, I need to, air quotes, need to go to the gym, work harder, faster, more, and I'm worthless unless I go to a 60 minute body pump class or whatever our former associations were of what we think we air quotes needed to do. And movement is is an example. It's just one example. Let's right. give another one okay, just cool. for context. So, cause- yeah, let's say you have an uncomfortable conversation that you want to have with your boss, okay? So before most people are thinking like, what should I say? And that's where they go to. And then they might draw a blank or they have their anxiety creeping in, right? So versus starting at the end, which is like, well, how do I want to feel before, during, and after? Well, afterwards, I want to feel like he heard, he or she heard what I had to say. And I want to feel like I was clear and assertive without being aggressive. And I, and again, meet yourself in your fears and in your doubts. Well, I don't want them to think that I am being aggressive. I want them to think that I'm coming in with a solution I want to acknowledge that I'm grateful, but I also want to ask for what I need. Okay. So knowing that that is what, how I want to feel peace that I, that I actually ask for what I need versus starting at like, what should I say? Well, then again, it's, you're not starting with the end in mind and it might have nothing to do with how you want the end result. Basically, when you think about, you kind of future pace how you want to feel, and then you reverse engineer your actions or thoughts based on that. You're literally creating your life. That's where I talk about thoughts create our th- create things and create reality. So before, if you hadn't gone through this process, you might have gone into your boss's office and been like, "Listen, I'm feeling underappreciated. This is where I need help." And it might have come across in a way, again, against how you wanted to feel. Versus if you had acknowledged, "Okay, this is how I want to feel. I don't want him to feel this. I do want to feel this." So you go and you be like, "Listen, I am so grateful for all the opportunity I've had, and I don't want to seem ungrateful. I just want to be clear and communicative about where I am because I know transparency is really." important to you. Yeah. The outcome might be the same, but who you're being and how you're feeling. And now you're cool, calm and collected. You have really like neutral or positive neuro associations alongside that conversation. The energy you're bringing into it. Energy is different. The frequency, all of it. Because you get, you gave it forethought. You reverse engineered how you wanted to feel and then chose actions or, or words based on that versus just went straight to the doing, ignored how you wanted to feel, ignored your fears. And then just maybe it was word vomit in the office. Mm-hmm. And so, then, yeah, you walk away like, oh, that, that yeah. sort of made things worse. And it, exactly. back to the movement one, it makes me think of when going zero to 60 and then you're so terrified of the 60 that you keep putting it off and putting it off, totally. putting off because it's too exhausting. And then you just end up doing nothing. And then you beat yourself up for doing nothing. Totally. When really, you could have just reverse engineered it and stretched in your living room while you watched something. Exactly. <laughs> and been the buffalo that and went into like, the store. Yeah, and then you know? felt really good about exactly. it. Exactly. And then, yeah, this could be true with the conversation that you, the, uh, the air quotes uncomfortable, even though it doesn't have to be uncomfortable because you can reverse engineer comfort, right? 
the conversation that you want to have, the trip to the dentist that you're, or the appointment to the dentist you're not making, whatever it is that you're in your head about, it's like reverse. It, here's the thing. Sometimes I reverse engineer ease and convenience. So for example, a lot of people have a thought process of like, oh, eating healthy is so expensive and time consuming. And I'm like, great, how can I reverse engineer convenience and fiscal responsibility? Oh, those bags of salad are on sale at Costco and those are really fast and inexpensive and I'll just keep that in my fridge. And I just reverse engineered speed, ease, convenience and fiscal responsibility. Oh, I literally just bought one of those chopped salad bags that I'm obsessed with the Taylor Farms ones. Yes. They have so many good ones, but to your point about this, and I'm finally in a place now where I know I don't have to eat greens every day, but I also have the part of my brain that knows that greens are good for me. They're full of a lot of nutrients that my body needs. And it's beautiful that I can go five days with no greens. Cause yes. that you, I, with, in my orthorexia days, you now I had a checklist mm -hmm. of things. And if I didn't have greens, my day was over. And I ate so much kale and now I don't even like kale. One of my friends the other day was like, hey, do you want to split a kale salad? And I was like, no, I don't like kale. And now I have that awareness. Like I know that about myself and that's cool. But anyway, to your point about the bag salads, I realized I was not setting myself up, self up for success for the week. And the reason why I had gone that long is I bought like just a normal bag of salad that didn't have all the fun things, like the, the dressing included and like the little tortilla chips and yep. uh, like sprinkles that you can put on top that make it good. And I didn't get a rotisserie chicken, which is really easy to pull apart and throw some protein on top. I made it more complicated thinking I was gonna get to that, but had I reverse engineered it, as I'm thinking at the grocery store, instead of trying to go zero to 60, I should have been like, hey, I have a busy week. So let's get realistic about this and buying this chopped salad kit that has everything in it that I love from Taylor Farms, the, the cilantro, whatever sauce is so good. Instead of freaking out about, oh, I have to make my uh, dr salad dressing from scratch. Exactly. I, I used to be that way. Then it's like, voila. Totally. This, me getting my greens was just, made more simple, but I had to go through the whole process. Right. Yeah. And you're Did reverse I engineer. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. And here's the other thing that you said that you said underneath all of that, this is why we talked about beliefs back in the third part, right? Because if you have a belief, again, we're using the salad example that eating, you know, nutrient dense food is complicated and expensive and inconvenient and takes too much time, you're not going to go come up with a solution to make it work. So that's why knowing your beliefs and recognizing when you have an unconscious or subconscious belief that's sabotaging you and having a way to actually break through it and neutralize it, which we talked about in the part three, that's everything too. Yes. Okay, good. So, so yeah. So to kind of nutshell it, the invitation for you is just notice where are you playing a losing game? right? Where are you trying to overhaul your life in maximums and really setting yourself up for failure rather than making commitments, promises, declarations in minimums to set yourself up for success and witnessing yourself step into success so that you're literally witnessing yourself following through on things and setting yourself up for success. And then where can you, instead of going straight into the doing and straight into the acting, where can you integrate everything that we've talked about in this four-part series and really identify, well, how do I want to feel and who do I want to be and what actions can I reverse engineer to get me there or to create that outcome? Or sometimes it's reverse engineering a thought, but that's it. If all you do again, it's not sexy. We're just inviting you to create an awareness of these concepts of a winning game versus a losing game, minimums versus maximums, and this idea that you have the ability to reverse engineer the exact outcome that you want to feel in your nervous system, it changes the game. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Acting As If. And don't forget that all the resources mentioned in this episode can be found over at leanellington.com slash acting as if. And we'll be back with more What's God Got To Do With It. But in the meantime, I would love to hear from you. So tell me about where you are in your story. You know, what questions you have? Where do you feel like you need clarity or wisdom in your own journey? I definitely want to hear from you. So head on over to what's God got to do with it.com and scroll down to the forum to share your thoughts, questions, or feedback instantly. That's what's God got to do with it.com. And if you like this podcast and want to hear more, follow, like, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts to get your weekly dose of what's God got to do with it. 
New episodes drop every Tuesday. And while you're there, be sure to rate and review to show your support. It really means so much. What's God Got to Do With It is an iHeartRadio podcast on the Amy Brown Podcast Network. It's written and hosted by me, Leanne Ellington. Executive produced by Elizabeth Fazio. Post-production and editing by Houston Tilly. And original music written by Cheryl Stark and produced by Adam Stark. So, should we go electric? I think we should go electrified with Toyota. Electrified? Electrified means options. Yes, we could go all electric with a Toyota BZ4X, but then there are hybrids like Grand Highlander. Or we could do something in between, like a RAV4 plug-in hybrid. So, Toyota is electrified diversified? Yep, and with more options for reducing carbon emissions, the closer we all get to Toyota's Beyond Zero vision for the future. Exactly. How much coffee have you had this morning? Learn more about our Beyond Zero vision for the future at toyota.com slash beyondzero. Family Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. It's time to get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data, and you get to choose who joins your family plan starting as low as $25 a line. Does it have to be family? It can be family or people you like. Get more lines and more savings. Switch to Straight Talk for family plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Family plan discount with four lines all on the Silver Unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. Hey, I'm here to tell you about UpFaith and Family, the leading streaming service for uplifting entertainment. It's the only place to stream all seasons of the award-winning series Heartland with exclusive content you won't see anywhere else. Binge all of the past seasons and don't miss the season 17 of Heartland and stream a new episode weekly. Dive into the warmth of Heartland and let Up Faith and Family be your go-to service for all things uplifting. Start your free trial today. Go to upfaithandfamily.com for your free trial. Upfaithandfamily.com.